So uh, the first question is a, a true or false question. And uh, uh, so if A is diagonalizable, then a transpose is diagonalizable. As before, I'm gonna start with a poll, our lunch. As, as before, I'll wait for about a minute and a half or so, or if about 70% of you have answered. Sixty percent have answer. Oh, okay. Seventy percent within a minute. That's pretty good. Last ten minutes. No, oh, sorry, ten seconds. Okay, so overwhelming number, which is about 80%, I uh, think this is true. And other, basically 90% people think this is true. Indeed, this is true. But let's see why this is really the case. So justify this. If A is diagonalizable, then we can write it to be A, V, V, D, V inverse, where a uh, V is a binary matrix. So this is invertible. And D is a diagonal matrix. And now I, in order to show that a transpose is also diagonalizable, we need to write a transpose in the same form. So from this equation, we can directly write down a transpose to be V. It's a little bit weird, but V inverse transpose or, uh, yeah, so this is D. This is a diagonal matrix, its transpose is still itself. And then this is V transpose, okay? So. Just a take. Uh, sorry. Uh, could you mute? Uh, it, did someone ask a question? Otherwise, please mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, how do I find the eigenvectors? Remember that we want to write it in the form of some v tilde d v inverse. So this weird looking thing. Let's call it U. Place the row of the V here. So all we want to show is this V transpose is indeed U inverse. Let's compute U inverse is, so the inverse of the inverse is the self. So exactly V transpose. So we have A transpose equal to U D u inverse so we found that not only a is diagonalizable but a transpose and a have the same set of eigenvalues counting multiplicity because the diagonal entries are the same And uh, the eigenvectors are also directly related according to this relation. Any question? Uh, why do we put the V inverse in the front? This is because, Sorry. okay, the question is why we put this V inverse in the front. 
This is because when we transpose a matrix, let's say A, B, C, so recall A, B transpose is B transpose, A transpose. Therefore, A, B, C transpose is C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. So this last one appears in the front, D appears in the middle, and B transpose appears at last. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Okay. Is D, sorry, is D transpose just D because it's D transpose is just a D because D is diagonal, you're right. Okay, okay. Okay, so last time we talked about the matrix representation. Let's briefly re review that. Uh, as I said uh, in the previous lecture uh, in chap for chapter four, that was really the most conceptually challenging thing throughout the semester. So the idea is that if I take T, uh, that is a matrix transformation, Rn to Rn. It is a matrix transformation, means that there is an A, and this is in the standard basis, called the E basis. But we have another basis, B. So uh, we can define any vector in Rn in terms of the coordinate. So these are the coordinate maps this uh, from the coordinate to the standard basis. I can call it PB, I can call it PB to E, depends on how you like it. And uh, uh, this is the same Rn, I still pick the basis B. I can call it PB inverse, I can call it P E to B. And I just uh, consider the composition of the three mappings. This defines the matrix representation called TB. So recall that this TB has an explicit formulation. Uh, in particular, if this B consists of V1 to Vn, I have n vectors, then TB is really, first of all, there are n columns. The first column is T applied to the first basis, V1, mirrored uh, in terms of the coordinate of the second basis, which, which is still B. So this is the first column. Any question? Good. Da, da, da. And uh, the last one is, is B coordinate. Let us do some explicit calculation. Assume uh, V are eigenvectors. Now, if A, V, I, uh, now if T, V, I, this is defined according to here, is a matrix transformation is AVI equal to lambda IVI. So there are eigenvectors and A is diagonalizable. It's diagonalizable because we have found N linearly independent eigenvectors. This lambda I's, some of them can be the same, that's okay. Then TB equal to, uh, this one is uh, lambda one, V one, V, da da da, lambda n, V n, V. Any question for this step? What is V one, the coordinate in the B coordinate? It's just a one zero zero zero. So this is lambda one, E one, Lambda n, E n. This is exactly lambda one. Lambda n, put on the diagonals, that is D. 
So you can see that through this explicit calculation, if you go to the uh, lecture notes of the previous lecture, uh, we used another uh, way to derive this. This is explicitly compute key B. We found that indeed, uh, with respect to the basis B, this is a diagonal matrix. TB is a diagonal matrix. Any question? Okay, let's uh, look at the example. T mapping from P2 to P2. So we don't have this uh, uh, arm thing anymore. Uh, but there are more general vector spaces. T for polynomial P in P2, this is x plus one, dP dx phi to x. So I first take a derivative, then I multiply by x plus one. The question is, is there a basis of P2 such that T with respect to the basis B is a diagonal matrix. Is there a basis of P2 such that TB is a diagonal matrix? This question really contains a few layers. First of all, you want to know, I mean, whether you can find a matrix representation of T at all. I mean, I don't even know what B is yet. I'd better find a basis first so that I can find uh, the matrix representation of T. And then I consider the change of basis following the rule above to make the diagonal. How do I make the diagonal? I diagonalize a certain matrix. Is there a question related uh, to this logic? Okay, let's carry this out. We first find a standard basis. We don't have any a priori information, so we start from something simple, standard basis of P2, which is this E basis one X, X squared. How do I find the matrix representation TE? So this one is T applied to one with respect to the E basis, T applied to X with respect to the E basis, T applied to X squared with respect to the E basis. Okay, it's a very mechanical procedure. So uh, let's compute T1 is I take a derivative, okay, don't need to talk about anything, so this is zero. Tx, I take a derivative, so this becomes one, so this becomes one plus x, and uh, Tx squared is, take a derivative, it becomes two x times x plus one, so this is 2x plus 2x squared. Now I find t with respect to the e basis. And the first column is 0. So this must be 0, 0, 0. The second one is 1, 1, 0. The third one is a 0, 2, 2. Any questions so far? Okay, so this is really what we had before. So now you see, uh, with respect to the E basis, uh, this is our matrix A. And in order to find a basis B, so that, uh, uh, in order to find a basis B, so that this is a, a, a diagonal matrix, what we really need to do is to diagonalize with this procedure. We want this to be a diagonal matrix. Therefore, 
this basis should be the eigenvectors associated with this matrix A. So let's try to find this. Uh, let's call this A. Then we now diagonalize A. How do we do that? We first find eigenvalues. Eigenvalues are A minus lambda I. So this is minus lambda, one, zero, zero, one minus lambda, two, zero, zero, two minus lambda. This is upper triangular matrix. So this is minus lambda, two minus lambda. So we find three distinct eigenvalues. One and the three equal to two. So these are three distinct eigenvalues. So we know that this is diagonalizable. And the next step is to... Sorry, Professor, yeah, can you yeah. just quickly remind us um, what is it that, like, what makes a matrix diagonalizable again? Oh, so uh, the definition of diagonalizable matrix is you can find n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, so each it, eigenvalue will be distinct? Each, uh, no, it doesn't need to be that. Let's say identity matrix is diagonalizable. But last time we learned there is a sufficient condition, which is if you have an n by n matrix, there are n distinct eigenvalues, the matrix must be diagonalizable. Why? Uh, it's because for each eigenvalue, we can find the geometric, the geometric multiplicity is at least one. It cannot be zero. So for each eigenvalue, you can find a, at least one eigenvector. And these eigenvectors are linearly independent. You just collect them together, you have already found n linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay, got it, thank you. Yeah. Any other question? So, uh, uh, I mean, you can apply this rule. That just uh, tells you generally there uh, th three linearly independent eigenvectors, but you can also compute them out uh, uh, one by one. And finding this one, finding the X uh, will be an exercise for you. So just uh, three computations. Let's call these eigenvectors V1, V2, V3, respectively. Then uh, let's call this to be uh, uh, let's call this matrix V. Okay. Then we know that AV equal to V times D, where D is this particular diagonal matrix. So um, we're not quite uh, we're not quite there yet uh, because uh, our question was, was there a basis of P2 such that TB is a diagonal matrix? Now we have found that there is a basis in R3, right? I mean, P2 is a three-dimensional space. And uh, now we have found that in R3 that uh, this would diagonalize the matrix A. The next is to find The next is to find the uh, basis B, which is supposedly in P2. So in order to find this is uh, this uh, uh, basis B, so this B, each of the vectors should be the linear combination of 
the vectors, uh, the standard basis here, E. And then you can directly find that these three vectors are given by, uh, so this, uh, uh, what's the notation? So let's call it a, a B. So this is, uh, uh, let me call it B1, B2, B3. These are now polynomials. Then I just uh, combine uh, the coefficients using the coefficient v here and combine uh, them with the standard basis, which is one times vi one plus x times vi two plus x squared times vi three. So I'll uh, leave to you as an exercise to check TB is indeed a diagonal. Any question? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so going back up to the diagonal matrix D, uh, is yeah. Is, how did you find that? Is that given to us or? No, this D come from the eigenvalues. So this oh, is zero, all right. one, two, yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the next concept we're gonna introduce is called the similarity. I have A and B. So these are N by N matrices. A is similar. This is a, a mathematical terminology. It's just not just that A looks like B, but similar to B. If there exists an invertible matrix, V such that A equal to. Projector trying to pause. Yeah. Three, seven leaves closes. So, sorry, could you mute? I have all the rest. Oh, I'm so sorry. No problem. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so if there exists an invertible matrix V such that A equals to uh, v, v inverse uh, BV. So, uh, uh, so, for example, uh, in the case of diagonalizable matrix, so if A diagonalizable, immediately we have A and a diagonal matrix B are similar. And they're related by the matrix consisting of all the eigenvectors. So uh, if the two matrices are similar, we can say a number of things. One is that their eigenvalues must be the same. So zero, A, B are similar. then we can say something even stronger. The determinant for any lambda, for any lambda, A minus lambda I, the determinant is equal to the determinant of B minus lambda I. Therefore, A, B share, the same set of eigenvalues. Counting multiplicities. Just 
Just a quick question. Yeah. The lambdas in when you plug in this equation have to be the same lambda, right? It could the, be. Have to be the same lambda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, for any lambda. Yeah. So, so actually, let me put C here since we talked about the complex eigenvalues. Okay. How do we prove this? We uh, since A is similar to B, we have A equal to V inverse BV. There must exist such a B, okay? So now let me write down A minus lambda R. This is V inverse BV according to the line above. Minus, here's an important line, um, V inverse times lambda times identity times V. Because this is a scalar, I can move anywhere. V inverse times V is identity. Any question? Okay, so then by distribution, so equal to this. Now I consider the determinant A minus lambda I. The right hand side is really uh, uh, is really the product of the three matrices. So this is the inverse, which can be converted to be the product of three determinants, B minus lambda I times B. This now are three numbers. They can be, the order now can be arbitrarily exchanged. I can combine I can switch the order of these two. This becomes V inverse times V. I used the determinant of A, B equal to determinant of A times determinant of B again. I combine this V and V inverse times V minus lambda I. This is nothing but identity. And the determinant of identity is one. So this is B minus lambda I. So I've shown that indeed these two determinants are the same for any lambda. Since the eigenvalues are defined to be the roots of the polynomial of this one and this one, so as a corollary, the, eigen, the set of eigenvalues must be the same. Any question? Um, for um, A equal to V inverse B times V, can we switch like the place of V and V inverse? Oh, sure, uh, because uh, I mean, the, the just says there exists a invertible matrix V. So if you switch them, you just redefine V. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so now there's a, as I said, if A and B are similar, then the set of eigenvalues must be the same. Exercise. How about the converse, which is uh, if I already have this is true for any lambda, does this imply A is similar to B? Maybe not as exercise. Let me just, uh, let's just uh, do it right now. It's a pretty tricky question.
30 seconds more. Oh, okay, already 70% of you have responded, but let's wait a bit. Five seconds more. Okay, it's so about half half. So uh, 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 slightly more people tend to think that this is true or likely true. So uh, the answer is false. So although if A is similar to B, then the uh, two determinants must be the same, but the converse is not true. Uh, so uh, for if it is false, all we need is to find a counterexample. Anyone can give me a counterexample? Any volunteer? No? Volunteer once, volunteer twice. Okay, so I'm gonna do it. So uh, 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 it is pretty tricky. So uh, uh, if you can think everything through within uh, uh, a minute and a half or so, it means you really know the material very well. So it is a, uh, the, let, let's just come up with two things. Let's say with a one, one, zero, zero, as I said, uh, in the case of linear algebra, we want to find some counterexample. It's, it's often a good idea to start with two by two matrices. One by one is too simple. Two by two already has a lot of materials there. I find this matrix, okay? So these two. In particular, you know that B is not diagonalizable. So now, I compute uh, a minus lambda i. So this is just a one minus lambda square. It's equal to b minus lambda i. Okay, so that satisfies uh, the assumption of the problem. Now I show that a cannot be similar to b. This is a tricky question because it if in order to show A cannot be similar to B, I must show there, it, there's no V whatsoever uh, so that A is V inverse uh, BV. Uh, so uh, let's say that if... Sorry, just quickly. Yeah. If the determinant of A equals to the determinant of B, yeah. Does it necessarily mean the determinant of A minus lambda I also equals to the determinant of B minus lambda I? Okay, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so let's see that you have A is two zero zero one half, B is one zero zero one. The two determinants are both one. I mean, the determinants are just the product of the eigenvalues. So I can make the product of the two the same, but obviously this one has two eigenvalues, one and one. This one has two eigenvalues, two and one half. So they're not the same. Okay. Right. So, uh, so uh, now we want to show that uh, uh, A can, now we show A cannot be similar to B. How do we show that? Assume, no, this is not true. That is, there exists v two by two such that a 
this identity. is equal to V inverse BB. Then we can multiply. I mean, this means that what? This means then B is diagonalizable. This is literally diagonalized. We find the invertible matrix B, V, such that this one multiplied B is really a diagonal matrix, so it becomes diagonalizable, but this is not possible since B is not diagonalizable. Contradiction. Okay, so this question really has a, a few layers. That is, you, you need to come up with an example. And then uh, basically I came up with an example that the eigenvalues are the same, but um, one is diagonalizable, the other is not diagonalizable. This is true in general, which is if A, uh, more generally, if A is diagonalizable, B is not diagonalizable, then A and B cannot be similar to each other. Even though their eigenvalues are the same. Any question? Another example. A is minus two minus one, one, zero. B is three, one, minus two, zero. I ask whether they are similar. Well, I, didn't, I wouldn't really pose this as a true or false question for you to make a poll, because uh, uh, this one, you actually need to compute a little bit. You know, we're not sure whether it's diagonalizable or not, so uh, we just compute. So let's say we compute a minus lambda i, and this is minus two minus lambda. First, we want to find whether they're both diagonalizable. If one is diagonalizable, the other is not, then we're done. Uh, so this is minus one, one uh, minus lambda. And uh, so this one is lambda two plus lambda plus one. So this is lambda plus one squared. B, so this is three minus lambda, one minus two minus lambda, and this is lambda, lambda minus three plus two, so this is lambda minus one, lambda minus two. So uh, we already know the two matrices cannot be similar. Why? Because these two, the determinant of A minus lambda I and determinant of B minus lambda I, these two polynomials are not the same. And therefore, this directly gives us they're not similar. Any question? Okay. Any question? Yeah. So only when the eigenvalues are different do we have to do more work to determine if they're not uh, similar? That's right, yeah. Okay. So this is a necessary condition So uh, uh, for them to be similar. So if they are similar, these two polynomials must be the same. And therefore, the set of eigenvalues must be the same. Thanks. Any other question? OK, so uh, another, uh, probably the last theorem for chapter 5. So uh, yeah, quick. yeah. So in the example that we just did, um, yeah. since the theorem says that we count multiplicity, if we had found that lambda plus one, or if we had found lambda was like the same but had a different multiplicity for a and b, yeah, then we would conclude that they're not similar. Is that correct? Then that's correct. 
So they're, they won't be similar because of the corresponding polynomials that must be different. Okay. That's why uh, saying the polynomial are the same is really uh, a more uh, accurate and the stronger result. Any other question? Okay, so uh, uh, now let's say the last one is if I have three matrices. So A similar to B, B similar to C, then we must have A is similar to C. So, so A similar to B, B similar to C, we know that A is similar to C. So uh, the proof is very simple because, uh, so there must, by the definition, there must exist V and W, they're invertible, connecting A and B, and B and C, now I just plug B here, so this means A is V inverse, W inverse C, W, V. Now we know that V inverse W inverse, V inverse W inverse is nothing but W V inverse C W V. So W times V, both are invertible matrices, their multiplication is still invertible, so we're done. Any question? Okay, so uh, this really ends our discussion on chapter five. Uh, so uh, you might notice that I didn't really give you too much examples why we want to do the uh, uh, diagonalization at all. Uh, but Math 54 I've uh, found in the past few years is uh, really such a dense uh, class. I mean, it barely leaves you any room to talk about any interesting examples in detail. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of this class because uh, uh, there are really a lot of materials to talk about. But if you want to read the book, uh, so I would say that uh, so some reading, optional reading. Uh, which is book 5.6, which is called Applications to Discrete Dynamical Systems, it is very interesting. So if you don't know, uh, haven't heard about this before. So it is basically a population model, can be describing animals, you can now use it, you can actually use it, the same similar models to describe pandemic uh, and uh, other things. Well, I mean, we have this COVID-19 going on right now. That's why we're teaching it this way. So, uh, 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 and uh, you might find some interesting examples that the final distribution of uh, things called the equilibrium state may have little to do, sometimes they, they may have little to do with the initial condition. Sometimes they may have a huge thing to do with the initial condition. And uh, they can really be explained well. We're using diagonalization as a tool. Uh, diagonalization is also ubiquitously used in numerous science and engineering uh, computations. And uh, for example, in statistics, and there's a so-called principal component analysis. That's basically an application of diagonalization. Google's PageRank algorithm, uh, which is what we use essentially every day. Uh, so the basic version of that is really uh, very similar to this uh, uh, applications to discrete dynamical system, so on and so forth. But because of uh, uh, 
the restriction the time we cannot go into that in detail so the next uh, 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 optional means that it won't be covered by the exam but uh, for fun uh, for your uh, for, for your soul uh, it might be interesting to read uh, so uh, let me uh, briefly start chapter six uh, which is about so for the geometry and we're I gonna, have a question. Yeah. Will we be learning complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors? We have already learned. I'll give you an example before. And there's not that much I would say uh, for me to say about that. You remember this rotation thing? So finding the eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors uh, for the rotation matrix. So that must be complex. And that's it. So. OK. Yeah. Thanks. It, everything really goes in parallel to the real case. Other than that, I need to give you an example that uh, complex eigenvalues do arise. Any other question? I actually have a question okay. for how you proved the a minus the determinant of a minus lambda i equals to two, the determinant of b minus lambda i. Okay. The part after sim similar. Uh, uh, yes. Like after yeah, defining right? similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I wonder, like, how did you get to the top of the page? Like this first equation on the top of the page from a equals to v inverse b and v. So you just uh, plug in v inverse b v to here. I mean, this is that. The second line is because v inverse times v is identity. Identity times lambda times identity is lambda times identity. So you're so so you're saying you basically plug the yeah I basically just wonder like why there's a v minus uh, v inverse and v in like yeah the I. I mean yeah so the reason is I want to go to this line so uh, this is the identity that is lambda i equal to lambda v inverse v yes yeah which is basically this. But how could you switch the order? Oh uh, yeah, this is, this is a scalar, right? I can put it anywhere. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Yeah. Any other question? Um, really quick, can we look at the converse proof. The converse proof. Um, just just to clarify here, is a um diagonalizable here? A is diagonalizable uh, with uh, eigenvectors 1, 0, and the 0, 1. I see. OK. So um, could you just really quick give me a, a definition of diagonalization? Diagonalization is that you can find it's an n by n matrix. You can find n linearly independent eigenvectors. I see. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. Seems like I couldn't uh, uh, start with this geometry, so this one will uh, we're going to do that on Wednesday. Any other question? If not, I'm going to stop the sharing and stop the recording and see you on Wednesday. <laughs>